yeah, my name is Tom K. Kemp. I'm uh, based between the UK and the Netherlands. I'm an artist and I primarily work with role-playing game design. So role-playing games um, are not like video games. It's more like a tabletop situation and they're kind of this way of uh, collectively generating stories together that are kind of moderated or made unexpected by game rules. Uh, and I use these games to create, as I said, collaborative fictions with groups of players in order to tell unpredictable stories about complex systems and their affects. So I'm exhibiting a film installation of mine called Napoleon Complex. Um, it's a work that explores weather modeling algorithms and how they're used by global catastrophe insurance. And uh, it uses various methods, including uh, role-playing game design and animation and um, kind of non-linear filmmaking to speculate on the consequences of creating weather modeling algorithms uh, at a series of different scales from the economic to the intimate. And I, uh, I made the film with an actuarial scientist. So that's somebody who works with financial risk management. And as a job, they build uh, simulation models of global catastrophes out of statistics. And, and the kind of statistics and the data they use include things like the amount of damage done to buildings by storms in the past, but also um, very, very minute pieces of information like the, the behavior of atmospheric molecules at certain times of the year. And, and they kind of compile all of this data into models of um, potential kind of storm areas around the world. And that's used to define uh, things like how, how much, how expensive certain areas of the world are to insure or reinsure and the kind of value of land and those sort of things. So the film tries to kind of explore um, the consequences of the, those decisions. And through a series of, scenes in the film which are devised and sort of improvised through role playing game a uh, role playing game that we're playing um the kind of details of this job and the process of, as a, of this profession become complicated and uh sort of revealed to be kind of non impartial through the kind of addition of tangential personal information and the kind of exploration of the business side of this this process uh and then the idea being that this kind of objective impartial status that, that kind of algorithmic modeling and statistical simulation has, generally speaking, in this case um, is, is sort of like incorrect. And, and that these processes have kind of global consequences on both a national and personal level in terms of things like land value, house prices and investment in local infrastructure, that kind of thing. And then um, uh, I work a lot in my work with sort of genre fiction and situating these like areas of research within different types of genre and I would say this film is kind of intended to sit within a sort of weird with a capital W um, uh, fictional genre and kind of emphasize these qualities along with the way the film is edited um, both within the film and, and within these kind of satellite screens that are around the film you'll see this um, kind of mutant emperor moth hatching uh, and kind of flying towards the film set which is meant to kind of emphasize the kind of unnatural qualities of, of the process that we're talking about. Yeah, artificial intelligence is a really big tent of a term and I'm not specifically a technologist, but I think there are a couple of things that are kind of interesting and important for me. And, and firstly, that I guess a lot of the time when we're talking about artificial intelligence, there's this model of the neural network, which is this, um, way of feeding sets of data to a series of algorithms in order to like help it create uh, very specific kinds of informed decision making um, and I think that's quite an interesting process because you're even if you manage to string together lots of these neural networks into something that might approximate forms of human decision making uh, they're still uh, always extremely biased by the data that is being fed to them and even if even if the they're also kind of given this status of being objective or impartial or um, kind of uh, correct or fair in the in the way that they function, so there's this I guess there's this assumption right that like the this way of like managing data sets and generating things is is very like fair or, or neutral or kind of impartial, but actually um, 
frequently when you feed things like neural networks with very specific sets of data, the results that they produce are completely weird and, and kind of reveal a form of decision making that doesn't feel like a human form of decision making, which maybe some people say is very efficient, but it, it can also kind of like be used to reveal uh, the kind of inherent flaws or strangeness of our ways of collecting data and organizing information, particularly in relationship to like statistical and categorical analysis. So when you see like a weird deep dream uh, image generated by a neural network, that's almost like a incorporation of, in my, in my opinion, of some of the kind of inherent strangeness and mutation of like the collection and categorization of data in the first place. Um, and then secondly, I think as we create these sort of technologies whose decision-making processes are increasingly opaque and independent from us, that these black boxes, so we can't really unpick how they've decided to do what they've done. We're able to experience an experiment with like the notion of other minds, uh, non-human or post-human minds. And while these have arguably existed in the realms of like flora and fauna forever, the development of like artificial intelligence like processes may be seen as a kind of step in a broader process of like repositioning the primacy of, of human agency and and within the kind of ecosystem that we function and sort of thinking about how uh humans and kind of post-human minds or non-human minds can be involved in decision making and action at like different scales so as the writer is someone interested in fiction i'm i'm very inspired by weird fiction as i mentioned so that's people like going all the way from people like lovecraft to a more kind of contemporary field of people like jeff and ann vandermeer m john harrison kj bishop and weird fiction is often like a sort of science fictional or paranormal type of story in which the protagonists engage with and are impacted by systems or phenomena or entities that have a scale and an agency far beyond that of the human or even kind of our planetary scale. And um, I'm kind of interested in those stories uh, in terms of how they can work as a sort of political analogy for the relationship between individual experience and the kind of vast and interconnected globalized complexity that we encounter and face, maybe very pressingly at the moment with um, the pandemic and how that relates to globalized systems. Uh, and that, those kind of um, influences I try and infuse into the work that I make and the subjects that I address. And then more formally, and in terms of my actual kind of methodology, I'm very influenced by um, theories of like post-cinematic filmmaking and like affect-based cinema. So that's someone like Stephen Shaviro. So thinking about like the formal qualities and the, the sensory qualities of contemporary video making and how they make you feel on like an affective level, uh, which is where a lot of my thinking around editing and animation comes in. And, and also the kind of improvised game-based kind of performance that I try and um, try and evoke. And then kind of all of that stuff I try and use to think through um, systems thinking and like uh, complexity modeling and how there is a need for that, but there's also a kind of danger within that in terms of abstracting things or, or despecifying things or kind of removing the detail from things. And I think there I'm kind of interested in, in writers like James Bridal or Patricia Reed who are sort of technologist to an extent but they're also deeply concerned with the with the subjective as well <laughs>